My name is Hayden Kirschball. I've been playing disc golf for a little over one year. And, uh, I've improved a lot. Nice! One thing though that's kind of remained the same is my distance. My distance has not improved much at all. And this, you know, this is frustrating and it limits my birdie opportunities. So especially frustrating when I stack up with players around me and they can absolutely crush. So it is this frustration that fuels my quest for 400 feet. Let's go. Let's go over to the whiteboard and do some planning. So currently I throw about 300 feet. I max out around there. So I need about almost exactly 100 extra feet of distance. So how am I gonna do that? First thing, I'm gonna do a lot of field work. Three times a week, putters, mids, drivers. Next, measure my throws with U-Disc and measure my arm speed with a radar gun. Third, I need to be filming myself, give myself side-by-side -side comparisons, look at my form, see how I've improved, see what I need to improve. Lastly, give myself favorable conditions. I'm gonna be throwing light discs into tailwinds. All right, day one, first day of field work on the quest of 400. Let's go throw. All right, so set up the basket about 300 feet away exactly. Brought my box of discs with me here. Gonna start off, uh, here's my Rock 3 collection. Gonna warm up with those. So here's a couple throws. I think these went okay. Most of these were going about 250, which I feel like is pretty good. In dismay over that one. But uh, yeah, the real issue is um, my drivers are only going like 50 feet further than my mid ranges. All right, now we're stepping up to the big boys, baby. All right, so here's, I guess, what they call the power pocket or the brace, and it looks okay. Um, I don't know, it's like my body's ahead of my arm or something. Um, and I, then I think this was the best throw of the session. I think this one made it all the way to the basket. So this one went 300 feet. Yeah, so let's play it back. So here's slow-mo. Got a pretty good pull. The hair is flowing. So yeah, right here. So here's the reach back. And I don't know, just something seems off. I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe my reach back gets there before my right foot plants. And then here's that power pocket kind of brace shot. So here's the ideal male physique here, P. McB. And you can see his head is just kind of like in a line with that right leg and it's straight, mine's bent. Um, and then his left arm is tucked in nicely. So a couple things to work on here, but overall I was satisfied with that throw. All right, so that was day one. Um, kind of see where my form is at after one day. So um, I was pretty happy. It was about where I uh, thought I would be. I was, my farthest throw was just parked right in front of the basket. So we'll call that like 295 probably. So 295 feet we'll say is kind of like the day one um, starting distance. And then this here is my starting form. So you'll see both kind of me freeze framed on the reach back and then I guess in the power pocket as well. So we'll reference back to that, you know, after hopefully I fix things. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be a kind of a cool visual to see all the progress that I've made over the, over the hopefully just few weeks before I hit 400. So. We'll try again tomorrow.
All right, it is March 30th, 13 days after um, day one of my field work. And in that time, um, I think I've gone out to the field seven total times. So um, pretty much every other day. And I've made some good improvements actually. I've had two PRs since then. Um, I think the second day I went out and I threw 352 feet. And then the seventh day, the most recent day, I threw 358. So that was pretty exciting. And I was able to improve um, with kind of two, two realizations to my form. Um, the first one, I was watching a Danny Linhall video. And if you don't know, he works for Dynamic Discs. I guess he's sponsored, I'm not really sure. But anyway, he puts out lots of form videos. And um, he said something that kind of stuck with me and it was that you want to hold on to the disc as long as possible um, and kind of let the um, the movement of the swing like rip it out of your fingers kind of. So I did that, I started doing that and I realized that I was kind of letting go of the disc early. So um, that right there just added kind of spin and snap and increased my distance at least made it a lot more consistent. Um, and then the second thing I would say is, um, if you look at my starting form, which I'll play right now, and then as you look at this, it's kind of, it's almost like I section everything off. So I'm very robotic about my movements. You can almost see where I kind of, you know, um, it's almost like I stop the movement and like section it off into four different points. So um, basically what I did was just, smooth it all out and not worry so much about form in the moment and just kind of reach back and explode through um, and then make it one fluid uh, movement that's the main thing and that that's really what um, that as well as you know holding on to it to where it kind of pops off your fingers at the end of the throw those two things um, really helped me and then I've been going to discgolfcoursereview.com, going to their forums. I've been reading a ton about form there. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, like I said, I've been watching Danny Linhall's videos. I've been watching Loop Ghost videos. Uh, if you don't know, it's run by Jason, who also runs heavydisc.com. Great resource for form. Um, and lastly, I don't remember the name right now of the channel, but I found it the other day and it was super helpful. This dude has like 800 views on his videos, but it's amazing. So I'll put the name for that on the screen right now. And um, yeah, with all that, I've improved quite a bit. Um, so let's have a look at my day seven form. And here we go. So like I said, um, you know, the biggest improvement really is um, smoothing out that form. It's really helpful to break down your form into different segments, but then you do have to put it all together, you know, transfer the energy through all those segments. And to do that, it has to be one fluid movement. And that was something that I think I was missing and something that I am doing better at now. Um, look at this throw here. Yeah, just a lot smoother. Um, a couple other things that I think have improved is my left arm is in tight and then my right wrist uh, is you know, they say you want to be pouring coffee, like pouring a coffee pot with your right wrist. That is far less dramatic than it used to be. Let's see if we can pause it here in the power pocket right there. You can see that left arm is tucked nice and tight against my body. And then look at my right wrist compared to my day one form here on the right. Um, a lot less exaggerated, but still there. I think that's good. That's good enough for now with what I want to do. Um, and then check this out. This is where the issues still lie. I'm not leading with my hips. Look at James Proctor from Team Innova leading with his hips, eyes down on his disc. Um, kind of like how Will Schusterick says, let your left shoulder kind of nudge your head back up to look up. So need to work on that moving forward. Wow, that, that was pretty good. That was... Yeah, dude, that's going to be close. All right. 
So what you just saw was the first time that I clocked over 400 feet measuring a throw. Uh, I'm not gonna count it for the purposes of this video, but I just wanted to include it. It was downhill, uh, but since then, a short while later, I did throw uh, 414 feet, flat land with pretty much no wind. So I'm gonna basically use that throw as uh, kind of the uh, end example for this video. Unfortunately, I don't have me actually throwing that throw. It was just one of many field work sessions where I went and threw my arm off trying to get over 400. But I will show my beginning form um, compared to kind of my current throw now. Here was, again, we've seen this before, but this is my uh, first throw that I recorded. This one went like 300 feet. That was a lightweight destroyer. We'll just play it back one more time. But here's my current form. This is me crushing on a T-bird at Morley Field. And it's just more athletic movement. And uh, everything's uh, way better timed. Here are kind of the stats from that throw. So um, it took me 80 days from the first time that uh, I went out in the field for purposes of this video. I did give or take a few, but around 20 or so field work sessions. I think probably a little bit more, but anyway, every four days I was out in the field. Um, I threw this disc. This is a Blizzard Champion Wraith. It's a lightweight Wraith. I bag a Wraith, uh, max weight, star plastic. So I'm familiar with the mold and pretty good at throwing it out on the course. That one I can get to like 350 out on the course with pretty good accuracy. Uh, and then this one uh, I can bomb super far, but with very little accuracy um, if I'm throwing that far. So at the end of this journey, something I learned is I don't think it's gonna be super useful to just compare my form from when I started to now, maybe maybe for a separate video. But I think more importantly is I learned I learned three three main things that were the big takeaways from this uh, project that I've been doing. Um, the first one is that disc golf is fortunate in that it's a hobby or sport or whatever that has very measurable goals. Whether it's your score on a certain course or it's um, a distance that you throw or even arm speed. Um, that you can clock with a with a speed gun. Um, it's very similar to weightlifting or running in that regard. And that can make the sport very addicting and very satisfying. But when you really, really try to improve, it can also be discouraging and frustrating when you don't hit um, these numbers that you set out to hit. Um, in my case, 400 feet. And, you know, you think of something like drawing or painting. There's no measurable goal, really. You can only look at, you know, this is what my paintings looked like two months ago. This is what my paintings look like now. Oh, it looks a lot better. And so I think um, a lot of your improvement is going to be more like that. And really the measurable, part, measurable parts are good just kind of landmarks. Um, and I guess what I mean by that is it took me a long time to hit 400 feet, or at least it felt like a long time because I was playing every single day and then going out in the field two or three times a week. And it, when I wasn't hitting those numbers, it felt like I wasn't getting any better. But that's not true. My friend Mitchell, who taught me how to play, always said, your performance will come before your results. You start to get better before you're going to see, you know, your score decrease, before you're going to see your measure, you know, the throws that you measure um, hit the goals that you want. So that's the first thing is even if you're not hitting numbers, don't get frustrated. You are getting better. You have to quote unquote, trust the process and keep going. The second thing I would say is I've been very fortunate to have learned how to play disc golf at Morley Field. I worked in the shop at Morley Field for a while. Morley Field, you know, there's tons of advanced players that play there, like 950 rated plus guys. I wanted to get good so, so bad that I asked advice from everyone to the point to where it was just overload and people had, you know, when you hear nine different ways to say the same thing, it gets very confusing. And a lot of times when you play you, or if you've been or in the field, you think so much about what you're doing that it actually doesn't help you. When at the end of the day, you just have to go out and throw and throw again and throw till your arm falls off. 
And you'll have these moments, like I had these moments where I would be throwing in the field and it's not that something would click, but I'd be, you know, I would throw something really well and I would go, oh, that's probably what they meant. Um, that's not how I would think about it, but that I can see what they were saying now. And so, you know, there's just because you're a great player doesn't mean you're a great teacher. And there's so many resources out there and so many videos online on how to throw well that if you don't actually go out in the field and figure it out for yourself, it's never going to work out for you. And don't be discouraged because your throw, you know, you're not doing this or doing that, that this form video by this pro or whatever says, like, there's different ways to eat a Reese's cup and you have to trust that if you just keep doing something, you're going to get better at it. And that's all you can do. I mean, yes, take a, take good advice, but at the end of the day, you really just have to go do it. Um, and then the last thing I would say is the most important thing that I gained from all this, uh, wasn't distance at all. Um, throwing 400 feet as a goal helped me because it, uh, encouraged me to get out to the field, but in doing so, my timing got better. I got more spin on the disc. I got more snap. I learned how to aim on the tee pad. I learned how to uh, throw a proper hyzer where I you know, kept my body over the shot and actually pulled through in that angle. Um, it's good to have distance goals, but I mean, I've only thrown over 400 feet a couple times now where I've measured it. And um, I'm now realizing that 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 result isn't what's important. Um, that about wraps up this project. Um, I do want to shout out a few things. Uh, first thing I want to shout out is uh, Disc Baron. Uh, these dudes are really cool and they have a sweet website and I order discs from there a lot. They sent me this disc for free. Um, and they also sent me like handwritten letter every time I'd order a disc. So I don't know if they still do that, but that was a nice personal touch. And uh, yeah, discbaron.com. And then lastly, uh, discgolfrack.com. Check out discgolfrack.com. They sell kind of like an economy PVC rack, um, kind of a DIY rack that you can build yourself. But if you don't want to build it yourself, they can do it for you and they'll ship it to you. And that's actually how I store all my discs. So definitely check out discgolfrack.com. And that's all I got for today, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.